Hey guys, thanks for coming back to my channel. Um, to the, today's video is going to be the first in what will be a weekly series of book videos. Um, the plan so far is um, that every week I'm going to be talking about four different books. The first will be a classic. The second will be a more um, modern selection. The third will be by a Canadian author. And the fourth will be um, what I'm currently reading. So I hope you enjoy this and um, let's get started. So the classic that I've selected to talk about today is The Haunting of Hill House by Shirley Jackson. Now this was written in 1959 and it's a near, in my opinion, perfect haunted house story. Now if the name sounds familiar to you and you haven't read the books, that could be because there's been a few, um, or a couple at least, movies made based on the text. The most recent, I think, was in the late 90s, and it starred Liam Neeson and Catherine Zeta-Jones. Now, the, the movies really don't do this book any justice, because to me what makes it so special is how fantastically written it is. The prose that Shirley Jackson uses to weave this incredibly chilling story is just out of this world. And the first page alone um, is so hard hitting like um, the first time I read it um, I read it over and over again just to fully soak it in and each time it just it punched me like a like a bag of bricks <laughs> not quite the right expression but you, you get my drift so secondly the book I want to talk about the more modern selection is oops, uh, Wolf in White Van by John Darnielle now, John Darnielle is the front man for the indie rock band The Mountain Goats, so if his name sounds familiar, that could be why. Um, Wolf and White Van is the story of Sean, a man who, when he was a teenager, he um, was injured and left horribly disfigured. So that's left him with um, very little options with what he wants to do. He's kind of reclusive, and um, when he does go out, he's very shrouded, and um, so, to pass the time while he's um, kind of holed up in his apartment, he creates a um, text-based um, game that you can play. And in it, he creates all these um, fantastical imaginary worlds and creatures and creations. And um, so, this, the book tells the story of Sean, and it also tells the story of... So it also tells the story of Lance and Carrie. Now Lance and Carrie are two young lovers, um, high school students I believe, and they begin to play this game. And anyway, the story, it kind of tells itself backwards and as um, tragedy strikes some of the players, we see Sean kind of be pulled in um, to face responsibility for it. And it just, it gets very interesting and it keeps you, it, it just keeps you on the not on the edge of your seat, it's not a thriller by any means, but it just keeps you so intrigued. And Darnielle has woven the story in such a way that it's, it, the foundation is so solid. And just everything about it, it it's, it's a solid story. And at first I remember reading um, the, like the, the blurb of, of what it was about, and I, I wasn't really interested, and honestly, I picked it up originally just because of who had authored it. I was, I was so curious to see what kind of story he would tell. But um, um, it stands alone fantastically, and it's a great novel. So next, the Canadian author that I'm going to tell you about is one of my all-time favorites, and he's a, a national treasure, and that is Stuart McLean. And so this, this book is called Vinyl Cafe Turns the Page, and it's the latest um, collection of short stories. Um, by McLean in the Vinyl Cafe collection. So what this is, is the Vinyl Cafe um, collection of books, I'd say there's nine or ten at this point, um, they center around this family of four. Dave and Morley are the husband and wife and the parents, and then Sam and Stephanie are their children. So uh, the, the book is absolutely, all of the books, not just this one, but you can pick up literally any of them at any point in the series. You don't need to start and and finish in order because you can really enjoy it no matter what order you pick them up in. 
and um, it, it's hilarious. The stories are hilarious and they're heartwarming. And every time I go to the store and I see that a new collection has come out, my heart is just, I get so excited. And I, I feel like, too, that these stories are something that are so relatable that pretty much um, anyone can find um, one of the characters that they really relate to. And it would be fantastic for just about anyone. So that's Stuart McLean, Vinyl Cafe, turns the page. So finally, <clears throat> that brings us to what I'm currently reading. And that is another collection of short stories. And it's by Stephen King, and it's The Bizarre Bad Dreams. This is his latest, um, both his latest book in general and his latest collection of short stories. And um, whether or not um, Stephen King novels are your thing, um, I think everyone can pretty much get some pleasure out of his short stories. He's the absolute master. Whenever I hear anyone, um, you know, wondering about um, who's the best short story writer or where's the best place to start if I want to get into short stories, Stephen King is without a doubt the place to start. Um, a lot of people know him for his horror, but he's so much more than that and his short stories really, really drive that home. So I'm, I'm about halfway through this one now and it's, it's everything that I could hope for any Stephen King collection of short stories and it's it's fantastic. It was a Christmas gift and I'm just now getting into it. So um, I'll probably mention this again at some point later on down the road once I'm finished so I can give you a fuller sort of more put together um, review. So I'm gonna leave that here for now and um, we'll uh, pick this up again next week. Uh, in the meantime, um, I would love to hear what you guys are reading, um, and we could maybe have a, a talk about our favorite books. And, um, yeah, that's it for now. I'll see you guys later. Bye.